afternoon. The sun has went down. So I'm gonna do a little work here in the backyard where it's nice and cool. This is a really big sledgehammer that I got the other day. And it is a uh, 12 pound sledgehammer about. What I'm gonna show you here is how you would change the handle on this. First thing you do is remove the handle, the old handle. This one is really just a wreck. Somebody's attempted to tape it up. A lot of times what happens is you're hitting something and you'll miss and you hit the handle and usually they just shatter because that's a lot of stress to put on a handle. The easiest thing to do is to cut it off. You can use a saw. I am just grab this old hacksaw. I just And you know what? I'm going to make quick work of this. I was going to screw around and cut that off with the hacksaw, but A, I don't feel like it, and B, it's going to take forever. Before you go throwing that away, you might want to look it over. I'd say from probably about here down, it's pretty damaged, but and from here down, but that might leave about that much a potential useful handle for something else, or you could use it to uh, pound on to drive something out. You know, if you need something kind of soft, up to you. It's kind of one of those waste not want not things. Okay. The head of this sledgehammer is coming off. So I think what I'm going to try and do first is. Oh. There's a couple ways you could do this. You could drill this out a number of times with this with drill, and that would hollow it out, and it would fall apart. I'm going to attempt to drive it out with this uh, masonry drill, just because it's what I've got right here right now, and I don't feel like running and getting something else. Besides, I really like doing things the hard way.
heard me saying something about drilling it out. That would probably be a lot easier than screwing around. This is a uh, Oh, I use this 3 16th inch drill. A lot of times those heads are on there so poorly that you can drive them out and bust them up with a chisel. That one seems to be stuck on there pretty good. So we'll just do this the smart way instead of messing around. Start in a corner. Thing that chisel did do, excuse me, that star drill, is it broke up the thing a little bit so I can get in there a little easier. For those of you watching my other videos, this is a drill I got at a uh, state sale the other day, I was thinking about trading it off, but I just left it. It seems to work pretty good. Now we're getting quite a few holes in there.
Yeah, there might be room for one more. Yeah, but it's getting close. light through a couple of those holes. Let's see if I can drive the middle of that out. There we go. There's a big chunk of that. Beat up with there's a usually a steel wedge in there to uh, spread those apart. What I did there was I marked the top. A lot of times, if you feel down in there. That hole is kind of hourglass shaped a little bit. And what that does is you uh, when you put the when you put the handle through, 
usually it's uh, you can't even see it here very well. It's a little bit power glass shaped at the bottom and then when you drive the wedge it spreads the top and it locks those two in place inside that mallet or uh, sledgehammer there. Notice on this one that the bottom hole is a little bit bigger than the top hole. It means that handle probably had a shoulder on it. This one appears not to have a shoulder on it. It has a lot of has a lot of black friction tape, which kind of tells you how really old this is. I don't think they've made friction tape in a long time. For those of you who don't know what friction tape is, it was the uh, it was the uh, early equivalent of a black electrical tape. It was kind of a tape that was kind of a hybrid. It had that cloth, and it may have even had pitch or something, and it was kind of sticky. But it was kind of a cloth material. It was pretty heavy. It wasn't very stretchy either. I don't think they even make friction tape anymore. I don't know if you can see that or not. It's, you can kind of see that. You can kind of see the cloth in there. That's what that white is. It's almost like denim. Anyway, I'm going to take a little trip to the hardware store. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to measure that eye. And uh, when you buy a handle, there's a couple good videos on YouTube probably about how to get a handle or buy a handle or make a handle. But uh, you want to find one. believe they're looking for the grain to go this way and the one video I'd seen on there said there weren't very many good handles anymore the other thing I'm looking for too is this handle is pretty light duty this small two pound sledgehammer has a handle that is uh, appears to be as big if not a tiny bit bigger. This one has a shoulder on it. That's what that that's why the bottom of the eye is a little bit bigger. To get that shoulder in there and then the top. If you can see that or not, then that wedge is driven in there. I'm gonna see what kind of luck I have going to the hardware store and see if I can find one. One nice thing about putting new handles on tools, um, you can pick the diameter. Some of them have a uh, uh, what do I say, uh, kind of a, a silhouette to them. This one's not straight. It tapers here and bells out and it's kind of an oval shape. This one was an oval shape at one time. Seen better days. I don't know how old this sledgehammer is. The friction tape on it is probably pretty old. It was probably made in the 40s. Like I said, it is heavy. FYI, I've even got a rather, I think it's a 15 pound sledge, and I didn't put a handle back on it. I use it for um, working on items where you don't, you don't want to swing the sledge, but you need the mass of it, and I'll use it like this, and you can see the advantage. Um, of the other advantage is that uh, you can get something like that probably in your toolbox. Um, regular sledgehammer, you're going to have to hang it up. This one needs to be sanded and wire brushed and cleaned up. What's interesting is this has, doesn't have a face on the back. It has what's called, I believe this is a peen. This is a, I believe this is what they call cross peen the sledgehammer. Um, it might have been for blacksmith work. I'm not 100% sure. So let me shut you off here and go to the hardware store and see if I can find a handle see what I come up with. Thanks a lot. Top of the morning to you. Yesterday, I uh, was, toward the evening I was working on getting this handle replaced on this sledgehammer. Yeah, you probably saw that video. And uh, I went to the hardware store, actually I went to the home center. got this, so I need to try something new, it'll probably bite me in the butt, but we'll see, 
and uh, it might help somebody. I did read a couple things about these online. I was looking for places that might have wood handles. And uh, the home center I went to had both wood and these fiberglass handles. Fiberglass handles are kind of a kit. It came with this handle, which is 36 inches, and it says it's good for uh, 6 to 16 pound sledges or axes. It also came with this little package, and inside the package was um, the instructions, kind of an addendum, a popsicle stick, this, which I believe is uh, some kind of putty, I think it's a plumber's putty is what it is, I believe, and there were two packages of this epoxy. This epoxy is actually two parts, and the addendum says you got to really clean this and uh, make sure there's no grease and sand it. It also says that you need to thoroughly mix this to a uniform consistently and let and then uh, let it uh, set after you glue it together for 24 hours. And if there are any questions, there's a phone number there. It's pretty self-explanatory. And there's two packages of this epoxy. Uh, what I did on the instructions was it says basically um, clean the head of the hammer. What I did was I took some sandpaper and ran down through there and sanded it pretty good. It was a hundred grit sandpaper. Then I cleaned it with uh, some carburetor cleaner, wiped it out a number of times and cleaned it a number of times and wiped it out a number of times. Then I took and fit that handle, and according to instructions, you're supposed to get the, um, basically what there is on this is there's this yellow part, which you see here, and poking out the end a little bit is the white kind of rod or fiberglass. And I assume that that goes all the way through here. You can kind of see that in this picture they show here. Anyway. They want you to, to get that to fit in there and that, that white part just barely to, uh, pokes out on that surface or touches the top of that. Originally I was going to, I started to try and trim that and uh, contour that with a belt sander and it just, it did more melting of the plastic than it did of shaping the plastic so I ended up using a pocket knife and that worked pretty good. I just kept trimming it and fitting it and trimming it and fitting it. And, uh, and then I cleaned it all off with some alcohol. Um, then they tell you to seal it with this rubber to put it back in there and seal it. I also tapped that on there pretty hard with another hammer. They tell you to seal that bottom part, that's so the epoxy won't run out, with uh, this little bit of putty. And there isn't enough putty there to really seal this. Um, what you see here is I, I had a, a little jar of a plumber's putty and I've used this on other projects and stuff. It's about a dollar at the home center. Sometimes you can find it in a garage or estate sale. You can find a big tub of it. If you have a friend that's a plumber, they'll probably give you some. You just throw it in a bag and it's uh, it's kind of like Play-Doh, but it never really hardens. It's uh, I believe it's a kind of a clay that's a grease-based clay. You can see it's pretty soft. And I, after I put that on there, I just molded it to the bottom. And really tapped it on there. And what I do, uh, depending, on, I've used this for other things, um, like. I had a project where I drilled a number of holes through some glass bricks and what I did was I made a little dam and uh, set it on the glass and used that to, to hold the water for coolant. It's kind of handy stuff so you might want to think about maybe getting a hold of some. Anyway when I use it, um, depending on what I use it for, the old putty probably isn't any good for sealing like it was originally intended. So what I do is I'll take this and I've got a little plastic bag and I'll throw it in there. And then it'll sit around the it'll sit around the garage for 
couple years and I'll get angry and throw it away and never reuse it again. So that's what I did for the bottom. And you can see that the epoxy didn't leak out the bottom. It's wet from the clay. I assume that's the oil in the clay, but not the epoxy. Then I took and uh, you mix this epoxy up. It's, it's kind of a little tin plastic packet. It's like two giant sized ketchup packets. And what I did was I folded the thing in half and squeezed it a little bit away from this end that they show you to cut on. I don't think it matters which end you cut on. I cut it and I took and I pinched it back and slowly wound it up like a toothpaste tube. And I squeezed it onto this paper plate. And one, one pat side of this package is very runny. The other side is pretty thick, kind of like... Oh, probably the consistency of peanut butter. The instructions tell you to mix this stuff very thoroughly. That's what the popsicle stick is for. So what I did was I spent about a couple minutes. Uh, and the other thing that I'll, I'll let you know here is one side, one one side of this package, the material was very clear. The other side was kind of an opaque color. I spent a couple minutes mixing this back and forth on here and using the, the thing to scrape that. And uh, after I got it thoroughly mixed, I propped the, ha the hammer up and made sure that that was seated real good. I made sure that epoxy was, or that excuse me, that putty was seated real good underneath there. Then I used that stick and slowly poured that into the top. And I started on one side. You can see I did a little place there where it ran over and slowly let it um, work its way in there. It took me, I don't know, about three or four minutes to slowly let that stuff drip in there. And the reason I did that was so it wouldn't get any air bubbles trapped in there. I did see a couple bubbles belch out of there later, but I think this epoxy is pretty slow setting. An hour later, it was still pretty pliable. Um, I assume that they give you two packages of this in case you've got a really big uh, job or you screw up. Uh, on this particular sledgehammer, I had a little bit left over. I don't know if you can see it. There's a little bit left. I left that out so I could see how it was going to dry. This stuff is pretty far. This is probably about 14 hours later and the stuff is pretty set. The instructions say to let it set 24 hours. Now I did see it here. That, did I see that? Oh, soap and water. There's their web address. No, it was in here. Let's see. Okay, here it is. Um, it says thoroughly it mixed to a uniform color. Here it says uh, do not use in temperatures below 75 degrees Fahrenheit or above 115. Temperature below 75 will take up to seven days to clear. Temperature below 65 it won't cure at all, and you'll have to take it apart and redo it. Well, of course, I read that um, after I put the thing all together and had it sitting outside. So I looked at the weather, and it was supposed to drop down to like 50 last night for some reason. This is the middle of summer. Fourth of July is getting pretty close here, and uh, why it's this cool, I don't know. So I carefully brought the thing in the house and I set it on a uh, old paper towel and propped it up and let it cure overnight in the house and today I brought it outside and I'm going to let it sit in the sun here. And it's about 80 
and I'm just going to let it sit in the sun and warm up and cure. I'm probably going to let it cure a few days. I don't need to use it right away. Um, so far, so good. I haven't really had any complaints about this. I don't know if you're, if you're not used to working with epoxy, you, know, you might have a few surprises, but nothing to really complain about. The, uh, the kit seemed to have an ample amount of epoxy to do at least one big job. Like I said, it's uh, it's really it's it's still a little soft, but the way is it's stuck on there, and all of it is thoroughly dry. A lot of times when you mix epoxy, you get spots that are greasy, and those are spots that didn't get mixed. And like I said, I spent at least two minutes mixing this back and forth, and it was kind of a milky color when I got done, but it's cleared up now. So I guess in a few days I'll go attack something with this. I don't see where this is going to be a problem. So there you go. I and uh, I think I paid. What did I pay for this? Fourteen ninety-seven. And I bought some other junk. And a handle with a uh, a wood handle with a wedge was thirteen dollars and some change. So it was about a dollar difference. I thought I would try this just to see what was going to happen. Um, really tired of breaking handles on stuff. Inevitably, you end up shattering them. And the handles they had, they had about I want to say about seven or eight there. Um, none of them had very good grain, and they they really weren't that great looking. Which I was kind of disappointed in. Think if you're a big handle company, you'd uh, go out go out of your way to make some better handles. So I was a little disappointed in that. So I thought, well, for an extra dollar, maybe I'd give this a try. So there you go. Uh, in a few days, I'll go smash something to bits and see if this flies off and kills somebody or hurts myself, and uh, let you know what happened. So anyway, have a good day. Take it easy.